Yes, yes, yes. Shalom, Chavarim. Shalom. Shalom Lachem. Greetings, my brothers and sisters, and also others checking out this video. What is Hebrew? What is Hebrew? There's a lot of misconceptions, many misconceptions that have been disseminated and circulated and prevailing and believed over the past like 400, at least 400 years on what Hebrew, who's a Hebrew, and what does Hebrew really mean. And many of these misconceptions, they are 180 degrees opposite of what we have in the written account, speaking of the, the, the Hebrew Bible, what's called the Hebrew Bible, as well as what we can find in archaeology. And a lot of things have been mislabeled, misnomered, misnomered, in other words, misnamed. So what is Hebrew scripturally? First of all, we'd like to define what Hebrew is according to the scriptures. So the scriptures give a definition and the context for itself. This would be our first our first, we could say, proof, our first invoice, provide some of the invoices here. Not just receipts. Receipts is what you have paid for. Invoice is, is what is owed, right? It's like a bill, right? And this is like to the academic community, to a lot of the so-called biblical, you know, the nowadays modern Bible community. Also to the latter day, we could say the, the Jewish community as well. Even though many of them know a little bit better, but what they put out to the Goyim, to the other nations, to the nations is a little different, it's much different, you know, than what they study themselves and what we, from a Hebrew perspective, right, from a, we say, an Israel and an Israelite and of the tribe of Judah, you know, Moa An Bessazem Negeda Yehuda, from the tribe of Judah perspective. So, what is Hebrew? Is Hebrew a, a language, as it's called? Is Hebrew, does Hebrew refer to a people, to people generally? Is, is Hebrew a, a racial term? Some think of Hebrew as being a racial term among certain latter-day, like, resurrected, you know, we could say latter-day Hebrews and latter-day Hebrew Israelites. They say Hebrew Israelites. So by putting Hebrew there, is, is Hebrew a people? Right, and when, they, when ones will say, "Well, yes, Hebrews are people," many will say the Hebrews are people. Well, well, which people are the Hebrews? Are are the the Israelites? Are the Israelites Hebrews? And are everyone who is related to the Israelites Hebrews? For example, when this uh, Torah reading and feeding right here, Toldot generations, the sixth sabbatical study for this Shabbat strong, and we have Jacob and Esau, Esau and Yaakov. Esau and Jacob are both Esau and Jacob Hebrews. Abram, who's the first to be called Hebrew in the scripture? Now, what we have on the screen right here is the Ein, the Beit, the Resh, and the Yod. The Ein, the Ein, the Ah, the hard Ah sound. Some think that the Ein is an I sound. That's only in one of its forms, one of the seven primary um, sonants or, or tones. There are seven primary vowels in the ancient, the ancient Afro-Shemitic languages. Now, this this point of Hebrew it covers a, a couple of different um, academic disciplines or, or areas of study. Hebrew as a language, and then some say Hebrew as a people. So, who are the Hebrew people? In order to define, well, who are the Hebrew people? We have to get to who is and who be the Hebrew person, according to the scripture. So our first, our first presentation, so to speak, is going to be from the scripture, what the scripture explains, because our primary point of reference, then we can look at archaeology, we can look at also archaeological interpretations or misnomering, misnomered pseudonymous interpretations or misinterpretations of the archaeological data, right? Because both of them go kind of hand in hand. But well, first things first, we can go to the scriptures, to the what's called the Bible, and in particular to what is called the Old Testament or the Brit Yeshana, the Brit Yeshana. Some refer to it as this latter-day acronym, Tanakh. Tanakh is a Canaanite city, right? Then also, is Hebrew Canaanite? Is the, are the Canaanites Hebrews? Right. Who are the Hebrews? So first thing, before we get to the people, right, that rightly, correctly, scripturally, biblically are known as the Hebrews. So what we call Hebrew today is misnomered. Misnomered is, is misnamed. It's a, it's a pseudonym. 
a pseudo, it's a false nomos, false nim, false name, false name nowadays. So first things first, here we have the ibri, 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 ibri. The ibri, the ibri, ibri, ibri. It's an awing. So there's, there's hard sounds and there's soft sounds. There's emphatic sounds within the true ancient, the ancient biblical Hebrew. So first things first, the people. Who are the people of the Hebrews? Another important point just to lay here, like on the beam of proverbially, put on the table firstly and foremostly, that according to the scriptures, according to the Bible, the, the Israelites, I, generally speaking, and of course inclusive of the, the Yehudi, the, the Jews or the Yehudim, the Judahites, didn't refer, generally speaking, to themselves as Hebrews. They generally didn't call themselves as, as, as an as a identification. They considered themselves to be the B'nai Yisrael, the B'nai, 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 the sons of Yisrael, the sons of Israel, the sons of the patriarch Yaakov, the patriarch Jacob, Yaakov Becher, Jacob, and thus the Israelites, the children, right, the children of Israel, literally the B'nai Yisrael, literally is the sons, the sons of Israel, because the principle is to whom more is given, Right, more is required. So they're referred to as the sons of Israel and also known as the children, the children of this particular, quote, Hebrew, end quote, patriarch. But what is meant by Hebrew according to the Hebrew Bible? So here we have to go right here, here, here. And let us bring this up right here, my sword. This is our first primary point of reference right here to Bereshith, 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 Genesis, Genesis chapter 14, verse 13. And there came one that had escaped and told Abram, Abram, Ha-Ibri, 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 the Hebrew, for he dwelt in the plain of Mamre, the Amorite, Ha-Mori, brother Ach of Eshkol, and Ach, and brother of Aner, and these were confederate with Abraham. These were who? They were confederate with Abraham. So here, 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 we have the primary reference to the person Abraham. 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 The exalted, the high father. Ab, father, Aram. Aram, high, exalted. The exalted father, the high father. Here we have the person at the root of the true identity of who, and even we can say what, or what qualifies one being a Hebrew. Here, it says that, and there came one that had escaped and told Abram Ha-Ibri. Abram Ha-Ibri, 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 Ha-Ibri. It's a very specific, um, the ain, the ain, ain is a is a hard a sound, right? Not just an i sound. That's one of the possible, we could say, um, pointings, right? There are seven primary tones in ancient biblical Hebrew. That's another very important point. Seven primary tones or sonants in the ancient Hebrew. It says here further concerning Abraham Ha Ibri. It says for he dwelt in the plain of Mamre, the Amorite, brother of Eshkol, and brother of Aner, and these were, you note that right there, confederate, Ba'ile Brit, Ba'ile Brit. They were owners or ones who had Ba'ile, husbandmen, so to speak, but they were ones who had a Brit, had a covenant with Abram. Abram who? Ha Ibri. Ha Ibri. So here, let's get into the Let's break this verse down right here. Here's unpointed right here. Let's scroll down to one's and one's favorite, the Tanakh. All right, let's point this out right here. So here we have Wayabo ha palit, Wayagid le Abraham ha ibri. First line, Wuhu shokain be elone mamre ha emori achi. Eshkola wa achi aner 
Wehem ba elei brit Abraham or Abram. Ba elei brit Abram, because here he's known as Abram, high exalted father, not with the name change as Abraham, Abraham, father of the multitude of the Raham, Raham. So we have Ram and Raham, Hebraically speaking, or Yehudit speaking. So here it says concerning Abram, let's close that right there, and let's bring this up right here. Concerning Abram, let's close this and bring this out again. Here we go right here. So here where it says the Hebrew, right, the H5680, H5680. So here we have the H5680, Ibri. Or Ibri. Now, Ibri, you see the BDB brings out one of the best definitions of this one from beyond, or one who has crossed over, crossing over from beyond, right? Cross over. Now, here they define it as the first entry, a designation, a designation of the patriarchs and the Israelites, a noun. It's a noun proper. Also, secondarily, a designation of the patriarchs and the Israelites as an adjective. So, here, Ibri, Ibri, Ibri can be used as a, a noun proper, right? Like the Hebrew, the Hebrew ha Ibri. And it can also be used in the adjectival sense, as even nowadays with like Hebrew Israelites on that particular level right there. Right? It's a patronymic, right, from the H5677, right? And now let's go down to Strong's for a brief moment, right? Strong's for a brief moment. Here in Strong's definition, patronymic, like a patriarchal name, like father, the father name, father association of a name, right, from the H5677. Now, here's where they start to insert some of their ideas over the past 400 years as to, you know, trying to define or contextualize what, say, for example, Hebrew means. Here they say a Eberite, a Eberite. Do you think we can look up in the Bible and find Eberite? Are there any Eberites? Right? Or is this something that has kind of been inserted there to try to give an explanation? So they're trying to say that Abraham, because he's a descendant of one named Eber, Eber, right? Therefore, he's an Eberite, as though that is the primary association. It could have been easy enough to say, well, he's a, he's a Shemite from Shem, right? Remember, there was Shem, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, right? But here they say an Eberite. So you have to make a note right there because here's where one of the philosophies of Hebrew comes in. That, well, Hebrew means that he's of Eber. And everybody says, yeah, 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 he's of Eber. And there's no other proof of that. Just picking something out of the Bible and say, boom, Eber. What's the association with Eber? Right? Eber, right, to say Hebrew. Right? But here they say that is Hebrew or descendant of Eber. So if we go to the descendants chart, I think that's in... We have that in um, Genesis chapter 11. In Genesis chapter 11, the primary patriarch, according to the narrative in the Bible, would be Shem. Would be Shem, right? Shem. She would be Shem, right? Shem. Shem even means the name, Shem, right? Shem was before Eber. But here they choose Eber because it's similar. It's a similar word right, for an English speaker. But if you're reading the Hebrew, right, we're going to do this right here just to show you. So there's Hebrew and Hebrewess. Let's just prove this point here. Let's go to Eber, right, Eber, right? So they say Eber, I, Iber, Iber, Eber, Eber, right, the region beyond. So here he is said that he was a son of Salah, the great-grandson of Shem. Remember it says that Shem, blessed be the Lord God of Shem, Right? So if we're identifying based on who's your patriarch, the primary patriarch would be Shem. Right? Hashemi. She said Hashemi. If this was the, the logic, if this is the reason for Abram being called Ha Ibri, this is not the reason. It is not correct that Abram is called Ha Ibri because he is a descendant of Eber, because Eber is in his genealogy. In fact, the word Abar, Abar, Abar as a verb is very, very popularly found in the Hebrew. Right? So what people are associating is by reading a translation, 
certain names have been translated and they're going just on a Western Gentile kind of point of view, a Western Gentile, like almost like um, um, a European, a European way of looking at somebody else's culture. If we look into the culture and look from the perspective of the Hebrews, this is just another word in Hebrew. The significance is beyond just the 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 um, um, coincidental, circumstantial. That's like a circumstantial evidence. The link with Eber is circumstantial, right? In fact, he's a son of Sala, great grandson of Shem. So, what was so important about Eber? that we don't even have a narrative here, even in the scripture, to point to any significance. There's more significance to, we could say, the great-grandfather, Shem, because of a chapter or two earlier, right? This name also, Eber, is a Gadai chief. There was a Benjamite, son of El Paal, right? Descendant of, of uh, Sharah Haim, right? There was another Benjamite, Benjamite son of Shashak, and it was a priest in the days of Yehoiakim, the son of Yeshua, the son of Yeshua. So even Yeshua is a name within the Old Testament Hebrew Bible. Yeshua, not as Yehoshua, speaking of Joshua, but Yeshua. Yeshua is Yeshua and Yehoshua is Yehoshua. They are similar, but not the same. Right. And so we go down right here. This is a, a proper name, masculine, Eber. So there's many ones in the scripture who are named Eber. He happened to be someone in Abraham's, um, you could say, genealogy, right? But the genealogical ancestor, the patriarch, would be Shem and not Eber. But there's another meaning of Eber, and this is getting to what Eber or Abar means in Hebrew. So Strong's definition says it's the same. They say it's the same. It's not the same, but it's from the this root. It's from the H5676. Now we have Eber. The name of two patriarchs were named Eber and four Israelites. So we have it usually as Eber and Heber. Eber, Eber, Heber. Now the pointing is different in Hebrew too, and the pointing is very, very significant. Right? The pointing is very significant. But here, let's go to this right here. Now we have Eber, Eber, right? Region across, region beyond or across, side region across beyond side opposite side right all right but see we have to get, keep getting to the root keep getting to the root this sense of eber means to across or to cross over the sense of to cross over right is from its root the h5674 now we have the abar so you see how it's pointed different the, the different pointing points out to any intelligent speaker or hearer of the language what you're really saying in the context. So it's not true as some say in the in the Lashan HaKadash, some latter-day um, speculation of how Hebrew is read by many latter-day Hebrew Israelites. It's not true that there's only one vowel. It's not just one vowel in Hebrew, right? There is the there is the bin yanim is patterns and patterns either tell us whether this is saying present tense future tense past tense whether we are speaking of like an adjective there are adjectives and adverbs in hebrew many primary hebrew verbs form different parts of speech to give the nuances and the details and the context to language and linguistics. So here we're at the H5674. This is the primary root. Now the BDB, we refer to the BDB as a contrast to the Strong's, right? And here in the BDB, it says to pass over or by or through. The sense of abar, the abar, abar can mean to like alienate, to bring, to carry, to do away, to take, to take away. It can also mean to transgress. Now, people look at all these different entries, but the entries is according to the pointing of the word, where the word is, and the context that the word is used in. The primary, the kal, right? The kal means to pass over, to cross over, to cross over. Right? To pass over, the sense like march over, to overflow, to go over, to go over. In a sense of, I'm on this side, right? I'm on the, the natural side, like I'm, I'm in Babylon, but I come out of Babylon. So I cross over. Or I'm in the Babylonian religions, right? The, 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 the pseudo-religions, right? 
and I cross over, I come out of that. I go, I'm in something lower, I go to the higher. I'm on one side and I cross over to the other side. I'm on the wrong side and I go to the right side. This is the primary sense of Abraham ha Ibri, Abraham the Hebrew, to pass through, to pass through, to traverse. The sense of it can be in some context like passes through, like passes by, to pass through, right? The parts of a victim and covenant. We see this when when Yahweh and Abraham are making that covenant that says that he passed through the pieces. And in the Hebrew, it uses the very Abar root, not in the sense that we'll say Abraham ha Ibri, but it's coming from the same root, the Hebrew root word. We're looking at the roots here, right? To our roots and culture. To know the true Hebrew Israelite culture, you have to go to the linguistic roots. In the beginning was the word. To pass along, pass by, overtake, and pass, right? Sweet by, passer by, to be passed, in a sense, bringing it down here to like immigrate. So a migrant could be considered to be a Hebrew, to leave, leave one's territory. Thus the sense of it, like to vanish, to perish, to cease to exist, to become invalid, to become obsolete, like something like a law passes. Right? Like this was the law today and now there's a new law tomorrow. Therefore, it has crossed over in a sense to be cross. Right. Another sense of the PL sense is like to impregnate, <laughs> to impregnate, cause to cross. The Hefil sense, these are the different Hebrew senses, according to the dik, the dik duk, the dik duk, right? That the Hebrew, the grammatical sense, right? To cause, to pass over, to cause to bring over so if i bring something over bring someone over that sense can be there too to cause to cross over to make over to dedicate to devote to cause to pass through you get the basic sense here right the hit pael sense is to cross over now here we have a verb this is the verb this is the primary root the verb everything is contained in the verbs when we say ha ibri we're speaking of a noun and in a sense uh, adjectival Right, an adjectival sense, but a noun. So one sense of Avram ha Ibri is as a noun. Here we're looking at the root, right? The H5674. It's a primitive, it's the ancient root, Abar, right? To cross, to cross, to cross over. It's used in like a very wide, used very widely of any transition. See, here's the key thing transition. Right. Literally, it can be used literally like one was on this side and then went on that side or in a figurative sense. I was in this belief, this set of beliefs, but then I recognized that the beliefs were no good. It was wrong. And I crossed over. I was in a lower consciousness and I went to a higher consciousness, another level of it. So there's a spirituality level of what Hebrew means that we are very shocked somewhat shouldn't be so surprised but many of the biblical you know scholars and and many you know linguistic and people even claiming to defend the bible or, or to bring out the truth miss over this primary sense even when they are so focused on spirituality even from a brit kadasha new testament sense spirituality they often miss this aspect of hebrew Right? of Hebrew and the Hebrews, right? So transition, literally or figuratively, transitively, intransitively, intensively, or causatively. Now each of these have different verbal pointings, pointings of the word that brings out that sense of it to an intelligent listener, reader, speaker of Hebrew, specifically to cover in copulation. Right? So it can have a more intimate sense to alienate, to alter at all. And now each of these that you see right here, it brings out the different translations of the primary root in different areas of the Bible in order to bring out the context of the meaning. Right? But the primary sense of this right, is to cross over. Right, the primary sense is to cross over, getting right here to the very root of it, to pass over, to pass through, to cross over. This is the primary sense of the root of Hebrew, to cross over. And I submit to you, because of how Hebrew is used, right, how Hebrew is used throughout the scripture, especially here in this first sense. This is the first sense of Hebrew. 
in the Hebrew Bible as referring to a descriptor, a name, and it's referred to Abram. Abram ha ibri, ha ibri, ha ibri, the ibri, the crossover, right? And he dwelt in the plain. Let me show you how they bring mistranslate certain things. Plain is alone, alone, alone. You see, is a tree, is a great tree. So Abram in the plain of Mamre. This is where we say the three visitors, the Shalosh and Ashim, the three mortal men. Some say the three angels. We say HaShalosh HaKadosh. We say the Holy Trinity. The Hebrew Trinity is the true Holy Trinity. All right? This is not a foreign concept, but they are foreign misinterpretations of the true Trinity. We see the Trinity, right? the Hebrew Trinity, HaShalosh HaKadosh, Kedu Salase, these Anashim, Shalosh Anashim. And they visit in the plain, right? The plain and the plain, the word uses alone, alone. And alone is actually a tree, a great tree, a, a strong tree, right? Because it comes from the ayel, hayel, el, the el root. Like we say, el, God, hayel, hayel, ayele, right? Uh, Afro Shemitic root shared even in the royal Amharic, another Afro Shemitic language, right? So here it says right here, prolonged from what? Strong tree. Right, the L, Ayel, L, right? So we say Ayla, Ayla, Hyla, Hyla, power of, right? Strength, strength, might, and power. That's in Hyla Selassie, might and power. So Hyla is another word that comes from the Shemitic, Afro Shemitic root languages like Hebrew and the Amharic, and then the primary roots like in the Gutas, right? But here, here, here. So when it says right here, it says that he dwelt in the plain. Of Mamre, it should really be the Elone. Elone. Elone is the strong trees where there were strong trees, there were thick trees. So now, check this out. Abram, some make a link between Abram and Brahma. You know, there's those reasoning, speculation, but interesting reasonings all the same. Abram. There's a link right here with him dwelling. It says, like, in the tree or where there were trees, strong trees of Mamre. Right, Mamre is High Mori. He's a he's an Amorite. He's brother of Eshkol and brother of Anir. And these were it says right here were confederate. Confederate means that they had a covenant. They had a covenant. Now here's what's very interesting. Abram is known as a great spiritualist. Abram, you have to understand that Abram would stand out. Abram, the one they call Abram, would stand out because of his faith. This is the whole narrative of the scripture as well, because of his faith, right? His faith, right? He crossed over, he crossed out of, right? He born in a particular religion or faith. His father, Terah, had a particular religion, one could say idolatry, so forth and so on, in, in Babylon, Mesopotamia, over at Ur of the Chaldees, the Kastim, right? And he crossed over out of that. Right. In other words, he, he forsook, in a sense, he transgressed his, his patriarchal religion for the true, the true faith. He was a pursuer of the true good, the true God. High Lahim, Ha Elohim. Right. So thus, Abram Ha Ibri, Ha Ibri is referring to his spirituality more than the fact that he's the son of Eber. Eber had other children too. Right, had other children, but they what distinguishes Abram from the other children is his faith. Right, his faith, as one, one may say, in the true good, the true God. Right, his faith in the true God. He had crossed over, and this caused him to stand out. Right, this caused him to stand out. Right, and thus we have in Genesis chapter 14, verse 13, something very interesting. This is a very interesting passage here, and most gloss over what it's really communicating even within the few words right here, right? He told who? Abram ha-ibri, ha-ibri. The first identification in ha-torah, the first five books of Moshe, of the Hebrew, the Hebrew, right? The Hebrew. And in all of the primary um, characters in the Bible where, where, where we have Hebrew associated, even Yosef, Yosef is pointing out that Joseph was a Hebrew too. But he was of a different spirituality, right? He was of a different spirituality. We would say of a higher, a truer spirituality. And thus, even with the B'nai 
Yaakov, the sons of Jacob, the Bnei Yisrael in Egypt, we note that in the second book of Moshe, the Hebrew book that's known as Bereshit, Hebrew says, it says the, the God of the Hebrews, the God of the Hebrews, associating spirituality with this group of people. This is why we ask the question of whether, of whether, um, of whether Esau is Esau, would you consider Esau a Hebrew? We would not consider Esau a Hebrew. The scriptures does not consider Esau a Hebrew. Yes, one can say he is a descendant, right? Physically, physically, but in his spirit, in his spiritual orientation, right? Where there was two sons, these twins. There was Esau, who was the physical eldest, the one that came out first as after they were wrestling, right, in the womb of Ribka, and there was Yaakov, there was Jacob. And this is why we get the description that we get of these two types, though they are twins. Get this, they are twins. There's something with a divine duality, right? There's this duality that's going on. They are twins, but one is inclined to the way of Yahweh Hey, and the other is 180 degrees opposite. Right? That's why it says of Yitzhak, of Isaac, the seed shall be called in Yitzhak, in Isaac. Now, yes, Isaac had, right, through Ribka, Rebekah, he had Esau and Yaakov. And the narrative goes even so deeply to explain that Isaac, there's a period of time where Isaac was legally or Torah blind. He was Torah blind, right? He loved Esau, Esau, for all the wrong reasons. He loved Esau for all the natural, the fleshy reasons. While Ribka, his wife, the second of the significant matriarchs, so we also have the theme of the divine feminine, the divine working with the woman, working with the righteous woman of the generations. We have Ribka, Rebecca. To Rebecca was revealed this prophecy. And all that she had did that's recorded in the scripture was to bring this to pass. And after that had passed, the blessing you know, the blessing and some say the deception with Jacob posing as Esau. But then after it was all said and done, note that the scripture says that Yitzhak Isaac blessed Yaakov twice. And then Esau picked up on the fact that he had married the daughters of Canaan. He married into who? The daughters of Canaan. So I submit to you when some people try to say that Hebrew is Canaanite. They say the Hebrew is Canaanite and the language of the Hebrew is Canaanite. When we look at the early interactions between those who are connected with the Hebrews, right? The Hebrews, and we have the primary Hebrews, Abram, right? Would Yishmael, could Yishmael, Ishmael be considered a Hebrew? One might consider him a Hebrew, but they're ignoring the matriarchal, the matriarch, the matrix. His mother was an Egyptian. Even when she had encountered the Melaak, Yahweh, Yahweh, hey, the angel of Jehovah, when she had encountered when Hagar, Ishmael's mother, in the text it betrays or it reveals the cometicism of her in a divine encounter, she interpreted that 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 um, encounter, right? That close encounter, we could say, with the divine in the person of the Melaak Panayo, the angel of the presence of Melaak uh, Yahweh, the angel of Jehovah. She interpreted in a very Egyptian sense when you're reading the Hebrew, right? El Roi. El Rai, 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 Ra, Rai, El Rai. She even interpreted it like that, which shows that a divine encounter will be contextualized, depends on the culture and the linguistics and the background of the people. So we cannot consider Yishmael truly a Hebrew because of his matriarch. And even it says further in the narrative in the first book of Moshe, Bereshit, it says that she married her son. She got a wife for her son, Eshet. Eshet, we say Eshet, but if you point it committically, it'll be Oset. Oset, Eshet, Aleph, right? We have the Aleph, we have the Sheen, right? And we have the Tau. Somebody put the Yod there, 
Ashet or Ashit, but really Ashet, Aleph, Sheen, and the Tau, right? Which we point as Eshet, Eshet, as in Eshet Chayel, a woman of power, a woman of virtue, a virtuous, a strong woman. But she got a wife for her son, Yishmael, right? From where? From Egypt. So he was not a Hebrew because he did not maintain the faith of Abram. See, the faith of Abram, the significant thing in the scripture is concerning the faith of Abram, the trials and tests that he went through as he, you could say, grappled or wrestled, as he, you know, as he worked out his salvation, right, were concerning his faith. And even the encounters with different ones, he said he didn't think there was a righteous person here. Right? He's looking for other righteous people. This is why we say it's significant what occurs in Genesis chapter 14, verse 13, to say that he was confederate. Right? Ba'ele, ba'ele brit. He had a covenant. Ba'ele, ba'al, ba'ale, ba'ele. He was an owner of a brit, owner of a covenant with these particular Canaanites. Now, it's no doubt that these Canaanites, no doubt, were of the faith or more of the faith. They agreed with the true faith of Ha Ibri, right? Of the Ibri. So this now takes it out of the limitations of what Hebrew means from a physical level. Some say that, well, all of those who are related to Abraham, that Abraham is a Hebrew. Some try to say that Lot, Lot is not a Hebrew. Lot is not a Hebrew. <laughs> you know, Lot is not a Hebrew. Right? It's very clear. Moab and Ammon, they're not Hebrews. Right? Ishmael is not a Hebrew. Esau, Esau is not a Hebrew. But who is a Hebrew? Abram, right? Abraham, Yitzhak, Isaac, Yaakov, they are Hebrews. Right? And the righteous descendants of the Bnei Yisrael, of the sons of children of Israel, are also Hebrews. Right? This is why it points it out in the text when it mentions Hebrew. When Hebrew is mentioned, especially in the Torah, especially concerning the B'nai Yisrael, it is significant. There's a contextualization of why it's being mentioned, where it's being mentioned. So Hebrew refers to spirituality, brothers and sisters. This is one of the main points that we seek to get across right here. Hebrew Right? That's like the spiritual part. It's like when the Bible says in the New Testament, the Brit Chadasha says, not all who are of Israel are Israel. Not all who are of Israel. In other words, there are many natural, fleshy, natural descendants of, of the Israelites who are not truly Hebrew. They have not crossed over. They have not crossed over. You know, it's like taking one out of Babylon, for example, Lot was taken out of Babylon, but Babylon was still in him, right? The Babylon was still in him. Yes, he was righteous in the sense that he had faith in Abraham, Abraham Ha'ibri. He had faith in him, right? But he still did his own thing. So it was like his spirituality was not very strong, right? So the Hebrew refers to spirituality, brothers and sisters. Hebrew, one who crosses over. Right, one who crosses over. That means if they have to leave their family, this is not even links the Old Testament, what's called the Old Testament, the New Testament. Right? If you love mother, father, sister, brother, son, daughter more than me, you're not worthy of me. Robeno Yeshua, Hamushiach says that. We see in the case of Abram, where Abram is called out of his country, his land he was born in, right? He was called from his family, from his father's house to a land that he would be shown, a land he didn't even know what land he was going through. So this even demonstrates how great his faith was, right? In Ha'ilahim and Yahweh Hey that called him, right? It's like when one says that they have a, 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 a like an awakening in a sense. Abraham had this awakening, right? He had a close encounter. Right? He had an experience, like a, a, a born-again experience, where he was born again. This is why Abraham, Abraham also is pointed to in the Brit Chadash, to point to that even though it's this new covenant time, right? it's pointing to the Old Covenant, Old Testament proclaimers of the new covenant, 
like Abram Ha'ibri, Abraham the Hebrew, right? So now, even the language itself, our next to topic or subject matter we like to touch on is how the language itself is often called Hebrew. However, Hebrew um, is not what the Bible calls the language. So the language is actually called the Jews' language. Mm -hmm. The Yehudim, the Yehudim, Yehudim, Yehudi is referred to as Yehudi, right? Yehudi, because the tribe of Judah became the prominent tribe of the Hebrews. You could say the last of the Hebrews, like the last of the Jedi, so to speak. The Judahites were the last of the Hebrews, right? And we have them coming forward all the way to the Brit Chadasha. That's why Yeshua HaMoshiach says to the Samaritan woman that ye worship that which ye know not. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews, of the Yehudi, right? So now here, I'm going to touch on this right here. Now, this right here is saying actually Ibrit. This is what ones refer to the language in latter day time. So it began to be known the Yehudi language, right? the Judahite language. Remember the 10 tribes went into exile, but it was only the, the tribe of Judah, a portion of Benjamin, Levi, and some of Simeon that was there, the southern kingdom, right? the southern kingdom, Ibrit, right? Ibrit, Ibrit. Right, so Ivrit, some say Ivrit. The V is from the European Jewish mother tongue, right? Where they say Ivrit, but more correctly, Ibrit, Ibrit, pointed Afro Semitically, Ibrit, right, is what the language, the language is referred to as the Ibrit, right? The Ibrit, yes, right? The Ibrit, right? The Ibrit. So here, 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 I'd like to touch on a little bit more of this right here. Go into the, you know, the Ibrit right here, the Ibrit, right? Ibri, Aleph, Aleph, Beit. Ibrit, Aleph, Beit. The Hebrew alphabet, right? Bring that forward, Biblical Hebrew. Now, this is, now when we speak about the language, because a lot of people would like to say the language of Phoenician. That's wrong. We're going to prove that the language is not Phoenician. The language is not Canaanitish, right? It's not Canaanitish, right? If Hebrew refers to those who had crossed over in the spirituality, in the higher and the truer understanding of the relationship of the divine and the human, the divine and the human, in the true oneness, in the true way, the truth, the way, the truth, and the life, right? In the true sense, then the language that comes down and is shared by many of the different tribes comes down from that Tower of Babel, the fragments, the fragments from the Tower of Babel. And this is why we can see, you know, similarities, right? Similarities in the language, certain similarities in the language and some people holding to more similarities in the language. But here's another thing that people just looking at the way letters look at don't really re realize is when you start to read even different parts of the Bible, you find different types of Hebrew. You find different types of Hebrew. It's like when you're reading English, anybody who reads English, if you know English, the Latin letters called English, the Latin letters, and you're reading different works that was written. If I read a book from 1600, it's written differently, right? It's written differently than today. The way, the way they use the language, it's the same, quote, English language, but it's like old English. You know, when we say old English, so there's like old uh, Yehudi, right? Yehudit, right? This old um, Hebrew, so to speak, right? And then also the link with the Sabian connection. That's another connection that we of the royal order, the Ethiopian Hebrews, after the order of Melchizedek, the Sabian connection. And yes, there were pictographs, pictographs. Right? They were pictographs. But a key thing that the scripture speaks about, it speaks about that um, it says that the language was one. When the language was one, right? there was a one mother tongue. Literally in the Hebrew it says of one mother tongue and one set of words. Right? So when we look at some of the oldest um, alphabets and the oldest examples, right? that's what we're seeing right there. Some of the oldest examples right there. Right? And some of the oldest examples 
there are similarities, but it's like the similarities found in the European, the Romance languages, right? We see them using the Latin, the script, but we see them using the languages is shares commonalities, but it are different languages. Is what I'm saying, that even among the Europeans, that all use what we can call the Latin letters. There's a big difference, right? There's a big difference, right, with what they're saying, right? What they are communicating, what they're communicating, and how they're communicating, what they're communicating. So though they, the language may seem the same, if we just look at, oh, look, that's an A, that's an L, that's an E, that's a P, that's a Q, that's a whatever language the letters are, what it's saying, right? What it is saying, and even the Greek. We can even prove how the Greek comes from this ancient, if we just use the terminology, an ancient Hebrew, right? An ancient Hebrew. So in essence, what Abram, right, ha Ibri held to was the primordial truths, right, that the righteous generations previously. So even in the language and linguistics, we have in the book of Yobelu, the book of Jubilees, in the book of Jubilees, it shows that the Malak Panayo, the angel of the presence, right, had taught, right, how he was taught, Abram was taught the Hebrew language. He was taught a particular understanding of the root language, the roots. You say the roots right here, right? Now, another interesting question would be, are there Hebrews? This is one of the interesting kind of things right here. We agree with at least what the title of this essay, the title of this presentation is, the essence of Hebrew spirituality. Ibri refers to the spirituality of the Israelites, the, the true spirituality. Let's put it like that. The true spirituality of the Israelites can be referred to as the Ibri, the Ibri. So this is why when it was in Egypt, it referred to them as, you know, the, the Hebrews, they refer to as the Hebrews, right? And if you read Exodus carefully, you'll see that in reading Exodus, it was a, a, a religious, spiritual, there, there was a spiritual level of the battle, a spiritual level of the warfare that, that is not really understood. When it says like the people of the children of Israel, notice that language, the people of the children, the people of the sons of Israel. That means other people were being influenced by this ancient, you could say the Hebrew, for lack of a better word, the Hebrew spirituality, the spirituality that's represented by the name Ibri, the Ibri, right? There was a spirituality that was being conveyed. So there were Egyptians and others who could be considered to be Hebrew in their spirituality level, although they were not sons, B'nai Yisrael, they were not physical descendants of Israel. This is why the Torah is written in the sense that it's written. This is why the five books of Moshe is written that way. Some ones can enter into the congregation, while others could not enter into the congregation of Yahweh. Some could enter in, and some could not enter in. So what we're going to seek to do is to bring out a little bit more right here, 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 right? You know, and the key of the Hebrew, see, one could be a Hebrew, like one could be a, a Israelite, right? That means a descendant of, they could trace their lineage, but they may not be a Hebrew in truth. This is why in the New Testament, that book that's called the Epistle to the Hebrews was written that way. It's pointing to the spirituality at the core, one who has crossed over, crossed over, as we say, from low degrees to high degrees of true spirituality. That's what Hebrew is truly defined by the scripture, one who has crossed over from the low degrees right, to the higher degrees of true spirituality. And it's the same true spirituality in principle today, yesterday, forever, the same truths, right? Spiritual truths always remain spiritually true, right? Now, what is the difference is, is that, okay, we look at different contexts of different time, right? And looking at Abram, Ha'ibri then, right? One doesn't recognize that close connection to the way that Romano, our rabbi, the rabbi of rabbis, Yeshua HaMoshiach, 
the way Jesus Christus was teaching in the New Testament. That's why he pointed out connection with Abraham. He says, Abraham was happy to see my day. Right? And they said, oh, now we know you because they were on a lower spirituality, right? Although they had the keys of the kingdom, the, the scriptures, they had the keys, they could not really enter in. You know, that points to like the letter of the law versus the spirit of the law. So in the letter, right, of the law, one might say that Hebrew, ha ibri, refers to eber, right? In the letter, but in the true spirit of the law, Abraham ha ibri refers to Abraham. Abraham, Abraham, Abraham became like almost like a, a, a spiritual guru, so to speak, right? He became like someone who was was on that on that new thing, right? Not so much it was new, but it was new in comparison that everybody had, you know, the whole world was going after the false gods, the fallen angels, right? Fallen angel philosophy, right? While Abraham, right, was representing that spiritual truth, like we said, the the the, the faith, giving an old time religion, right? And since the old time religion, the true faith of all the righteous generations of this world was summed up in what Abraham represented in his generation, right? And this is why it was so important for Abraham to um, get like assurances in a sense, well, well, who is going to precede me? Who's going to be this, you know, I don't even have a child of my own house. I have Damas uh, I have Eliezer, Eliezer, right? Eliezer, you know, of Damasco, of Damascus, of Syria. Right? I mean, who is it going to be? And this is where the emphasis on Yitzhak, on Isaac, right? And this is also where the emphasis on Yaakov comes about, right? And also within the narrative, the points that it demonstrates concerning the difference between Jacob and Esau is giving the true Hebrews that perspective of who has that Hebrew spirit, right? Who has that neshama? Who has that spirit? Who has that living soul? Right? And we can clearly see that Yaakov has it, right? And that Esau, that Esau didn't. The closest he got to is when he found out that the daughters of Canaan did not please his mother and father, that he went and sought to marry an Ishmaelite. You get that? Because he had already married two daughters of Canaan. So now, and further looking at the scripture, we have to see that Esau's influence even on the early Canaanites. So if there's a link between the linguistics of the language, some say that Esau did not learn letters, right? Some say he did not learn letters, but we can see the close relationship of the families, even though he had married outside of the family, you know, on that particular level. He interpreted that, oh, oh, that's why I didn't get the blessing, right? And he immediately tried to rectify the situation, right? In a natural, fleshy, carnal-minded way, but he didn't get to the root of it. That there even shows you a lot when I think it's in chapter 26 or the next chapter where you see that narrative go about and the same chapter Jacob gets two additional blessings with the name the Hashem with the name of divinity attached directly not the general Hilehim Elohim name in that sense but the specific El Shaddai right El Shaddai name was attached as well to the Baraka that was given to Yaakov Right? So then now, Jacob and his descendants, the Bnei Yisrael, they are or were intended to be the primary conveyors of the true spirituality that is known as Ha'ibri, the Ha'ibri, Habri, right? Ha'ibri. Another point right here before we get out of these points right here, right? Another point, right? Another point right here. There's another important point that we like to point out. Let's go right here. And let's just go up to this right here and return to where we were for a moment as we as we seek to sum this up right here. Right. Let's just bring this up right here. Right. Send to that. The Ibri. Because this is one of the few ones we've seen as Ibri, not Ibrit. This is the way the scripture points out the identity of Abraham that the Hebrews in the book of Shemuel Samuel, the Hebrews, the name ordinarily is used of the Israelites by foreigners. Another key point that often by foreigners referred to us as by our spirituality, right? It's referred to us as the Hebrews, 
right? And also Hebrew is used when a Bnei Yisrael or the Israelites, when, you know, when they speak of themselves to foreigners. This is a key point to, you know, elucidate and to elaborate a little more on that the Hebrews, right, that, that the terminology that we call Hebrew is usually used, right, is usually used um, by foreigners. So, so foreign nations and tribes will say like Ha-Ibrim, Ha-Ibrim, the Ha-Ibrim, Ha-Ibrim, the Ha-Ibrim. Right, the ha ibrim, the ibrim, but the ha, the, the definite article, the ha ibrim, that the ibrim, to say the Hebrews, that was what foreigners, other nations, non Israelites, and when Israelites spoke of themselves to foreigners, they usually would speak to themselves as being the ibrim, because this was a big deal. This was a big deal in the ancient world, what the Hebrews were professing concerning their spirituality and their faith right? in the ancient world. This is a context that's often missed, right? lost in translation, that who the Hebrews, what the Hebrews were defining at the, as a reality, although many of them may have used similar words like Elohim, Hailehim, right? the power, right? how they referred to their theology. The Hebrew theology was 180 degrees opposite of, of the majority of people and tribes and nations and nationality, ethnicities, tongues back in the ancient world. All right? That's the first major point. The major point is this spirituality that is associated with Abram Ha'ibri and then becomes associated with Yitzhak but more primarily through Yaakov, through Jacob, or the Bnei Yisrael, Israel, Yisrael, through Israel. Right? But in Egypt, the second book brings out the emphasis on the God of the Hebrews and the people of the children of Israel to demonstrate that others were picking up on the Hebrew spirituality. It's almost like saying being Rastafari in a sense, right? You know, we're talking about like black, we say black divinity and black supremacy. And, and we, the, the black sheep of the beta Israel, we the Israelites, you know what I mean? And his majesty, the king of kings, throne of David, ark of the covenant, you know? And then there's the reggae, the music, there is, you know, the way we, you know, Itao, you know, foods and, and, and the cannabis, you know what I mean? These elements there, Right, they are kind of in and of themselves infectious in other places. So there's a lot of people who may say they're Rasta, right? Because they are into the culture, right? The culture that emanates, right, from Rastafari, from the people, from our, our lifestyle. But essentially, it is a black way, right? Essentially, it's about the black people in the Americas and the Caribbean and the link with Ethiopia. But there are other elements that the world picks up on. You know, they have singers and players of instrument, musicians, so forth and so on. Some people are into Bob Marley, Burhan Selassie, and they view him from their perspectives, right? While many of us, as we say, Rastafari, called chosen and faithful, view him um, in some similar ways, but then there's some things that they would not share particularly, right? Because they have one vision of it. But I'm pointing out the link of like Rastafari, right? And the Hebrews, the true called chosen and faithful Rastafari. I'm not talking about Rasta or Rastaism because a lot of the isms and so forth and so on. But these are more on the fringe of what the, the true people of Adonai Jot Rastafari are about. So I'm pointing to, in a similar sense, how what Abraham, Abraham represented, right? The, the ideas, the spirituality. Right, we can say even the theology on a certain level. You know, we get different ones, and there's more examples that we can give that really proves this, that proves that some other people shared some of the elements, right, that the Hebrews and Abram was about, but not quitely right and exactly. Right, we even get to see what, what's his name, Balaam. Remember Balaam? Balaam could not curse the Bnei Yisrael. 
even though he was a prophet for hire and he was being promised a good payment to do the deed, he knew Yahweh. He knew Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. He knew the Hashem, right? And the Hashem had told him clearly, even through the interpositioning of the Malak, Yahweh, right? The, the angel of Jehovah, right? Told him, no, you, you can't do it. So this even shows that ones like Balaam, Balaam was a Medeanite. And the Medeanites were descendants of Abram, of Abraham by his third wife. So we can see where where there are elements of the spirituality of, of, of the belief that are among other people, but not quite perfectly, not quite right and exact. It's among that core, you say, descendancy of the children of Israel. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that kind of Hebrew trinity right there, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And then from Jacob, we have Yisrael, Israel, the B'nai Yisrael. We have them do that time in Egypt where the fear was not just of their numbers growing, but the, the influence, it's the influence of the B'nai Yisrael, even as it is today. That influence of, we could say, the Hebrew Israelite, right? The Israelites of Ethiopia, you know, the royal order, Ethiopian Hebrews, is this influence of the Hebrews, the Israelites, of whatever mansion they may be, that influence nowadays Right, that is so so dangerous for the status quo, right of 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 the kingdoms, the kingdoms that are now, because there's also the gospel of the kingdom as well. That's the true gospel, the gospel of the kingdom. So anyway, my brothers and sisters, just on on the Hebrew right here, 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 the Ibri, right, the Ibri, Hebrew has to do with the spirituality, right. And we find no places or time where others who are somewhat um, physically, racially linked, right? Like we say, black people over here in America is my black Jew people over here. You know, we say you may be my color, but not my kind. Uh -huh. You may, may be my skin folk, but not my kin folk. See, because of white so-called supremacy and because it's 400 year you know, controversy, this whole 400 year thing. We think that because someone is black or she is some of the phenotypes or some of the texture of hair, they are necessarily the same in spirit. Like, like, like people uh, are, are, are confusing the physical, right? You know, the physical things with spiritual things. And it's very clear that even the ancient times that they understood the difference like there were many people who were related, right? You might be relatives, but how many instances do we see in the Bible from, from Abraham, from Abraham, right? All the way to the Brit Chadasha, to the New Testament, where ones may have to leave, right? Some of their, their kinfolk or their skinfolk alone. You know what I'm saying? Because it's not really about that, right? If one is pursuing true spirituality. And this is what Abraham, Right? What Abraham was pursuing, true spirituality. Right? And also the Book of Jubilees as well, brothers and sisters, we got that available at the LOJS.org. You can get a hard copy. And we also have the Gutters, the manuscripts, the primary manuscripts available, because many of the notes in the Ethiopic Book of Jubilees point to the manuscript. So we have a manuscript copy of it as well. But I share that because this is the time and the season here at the sixth, going to the seventh. You know, Rastafari sabbatical studies here in this um, semester right here, here, here. And with that being said, check out the description, like, share, subscribe, brothers and sisters, tag this video. Also save a backup as well. You know how it goes. So like, share, subscribe, check out the, the links. You know, if ones can donate, you know, please feel free. If not, still like, share, and subscribe. Let others also, you know, tune in, listen, learn, grow, grow in grace and the knowledge of the King of Kings Christ. Yes, I, the Moshia, Ha Moshia, so that we can rise up the Messiahs. Yes, I, take the Mount of Esau. <laughs> yes, little more.